When I started out in cloud computing, I sent 38 job applications in one week, refresh my inbox every 10 minutes, hoping for just one positive reply. And guess how many I got? Zero. Now I make $50,000 a month running my own cloud security consultancy. Hi, I'm Suleiman. I'm a cloud engineer. And today I'm revealing the five simple but key reasons on why you shouldn't give up and how I use these principles to land my first cloud job so you can follow in my exact footsteps. And if you join my daily newsletter right now, you can get my beginner's guide to the cloud for absolutely free. Link in the description below. So cloud computing lets you use computing resources over the internet. It's like renting powerful computers instead of owning them. This technology has transformed the IT industry and the total market is expected to be worth $1.6 trillion by 2030. Basically, a lot of money. That said, even after 10 years in this industry, I still deal with imposter syndrome at times. Like when I first started working as a cloud engineer, I was naturally nervous at the start since everything was new to me. However, I quickly realized that my willingness to learn was way more important than knowing everything from day one. Because in the cloud, everyone, and I mean everyone, is always learning and picking up new skills. So to combat imposter syndrome, I now keep a wins journal. Every time I learn something new, solve a problem or make progress on a project, I write it down in this journal. Now when self doubt creeps in and I'm questioning myself, I just go back and look at my journal and I'm amazed at how much progress that I've made. And it just gives me the confirmation that I know what I'm doing. You always know a lot more than you think. And let's be real, you've probably been told being a beginner is a major weakness of yours. But what if I told you that it's actually a strength. Think about a child learning a new language. They absorb everything like a sponge without any bad habits. They just learn naturally. You see, with my first major project as a cloud engineer, in our team, we had an engineer with 10 years of IT experience. Now, throughout the project delivery, he struggled with outdated approaches, while I, as a newcomer, embraced new cloud solutions. This is similar to the stories of tech founders like Spotify's Daniel Ek and Slack's Butterfield. Despite lacking traditional experience in their fields, Daniel Ek had a background in ads and Butterfield majored in philosophy, but their fresh perspectives led to new innovations. This shows you the value of the beginner's mind in tech. So don't be discouraged by your lack of experience and block out the noise. Next, if you've been job hunting for a while, you're probably feeling discouraged by the lack of entry level cloud jobs. So let me bust a myth. The idea that there are no opportunities for beginners in the cloud industry simply isn't true. In fact, many companies are actively seeking new talent to train and mold. Why? Because the cloud is constantly evolving. So they need adaptable and eager learners who can grow with the technology. I think the apparent lack of entry level cloud roles often comes from poor job listing practices rather than a lack of opportunity. Many companies list jobs as requiring three to five years of experience. But what I learned is that they're still open to entry level candidates. And when I applied for my first cloud engineer role, they wanted a few years of cloud experience, which I obviously didn't have. I literally quit my job three months prior to learn cloud fundamentals and start building portfolio projects. Eventually, I landed this job and I didn't have any prior cloud experience. So you need to look beyond job titles and job descriptions because a lot of companies are willing to take a chance on eager learners, especially small to medium sized businesses. You can also apply for cloud adjacent roles. These are positions in IT support, network admin, software development, help desk, which can often be a stepping stone into cloud roles. Just get your foot 
in the door and then push on from there. Now, if you are someone that doesn't have a traditional tech background, but wants to make the switch to tech, then check out my Cloud Engineer Academy, where I transform you into a job ready cloud engineer in just 12 weeks. That's not to say that it doesn't require hard work and dedication on your part, but in the end, you'll be equipped with over 20 hands-on portfolio projects employers are desperately seeking. I mean, just last week, Jay, one of my students, landed his first cloud role, having previously worked in banking. So what is stopping you? Link in my description. Now, everyone always asks me, I've got this AWS certification. I'm certified now, but why am I not getting hired? You see, certifications are valuable, but real world projects, they are way more powerful. For example, for my cloud security consultancy, I would much rather hire someone that has built 10 projects and has no certifications than someone that has 10 certifications and no projects built. This is because projects demonstrate practical skills that certifications alone cannot do. They show that you can take your knowledge and apply it to solve real problems. Your projects are your way of showing that you've gotten on the bike and started pedaling. But what if you don't have any projects? Well, you need to start building and it doesn't have to be complex. Start with something simple like deploying a static website on AWS S3 or setting up a basic Lambda function. As you get more comfortable, you can add more complexity. Now, the beauty of cloud projects is that you can tailor them to showcase specific skills relevant to the positions that you are after. And if you're interested in cloud security, you can build a project that implements security best practices. If big data interests you, then and create something that uses cloud-based data processing services. Okay, when you hear the term personal brand, you might think of Iman Gadzi or Alex Hormozzi. But in 2024, having a personal brand is crucial for tech professionals too. It might sound daunting, but it doesn't have to be. When I started my YouTube channel, I had no idea how much it would impact my professional life. But over time, recruiters and employers began to reach out to me, all because I had been consistently putting myself out there and sharing my passion for cloud engineering. But Suleiman, I'm just a beginner. Why would anyone want to hear what I have to say? Well, when you start, it's just about documenting your journey and keeping yourself accountable by posting online. So start a newsletter or a YouTube channel. Share what you are learning. Explain cloud concepts or walk through your projects. Be active on social platforms like LinkedIn and Twitter. Share interesting articles, engage in discussions and connect with others in the field. Now, you don't need to do everything at once but do try and share something often. And a pro tip that they don't tell you, when I'm hiring for my cloud security consultancy and I'm looking at two candidates with similar qualifications and they both have the same resume, but one of them has a blog full of cloud projects with a documented journey on what they have learned, who do you think has a better chance of getting an interview? Now then, if I asked you what you associated with Elon Musk, failure wouldn't be the first thing that comes to your mind, would it? But when he was building SpaceX, there is that famous picture where he's looking down on the floor after another failed rocket launch. Investors were losing faith, but Elon Musk knew that each rocket failure was teaching him something crucial. In the same way, every rejection in your cloud journey is actually preparing you for success. How? Well, something that I teach inside of my Cloud Engineer Academy is when you receive a rejection email, don't just delete it and move on. Instead, respond with a thoughtful thank you note and request feedback about the areas where you can improve. And once you've got this feedback, it's time for what I like to call the post-mortem. Note down their points and compare them with the original job description. Look at the requirements that you are lacking. As you apply for more positions, you'll start to see the patterns in the feedback. This is where my favorite mantra, bias towards action, comes in. If you keep hearing that you need 
more experience with a particular cloud service, go build a project using it. If your communication skills are mentioned, find ways to improve them. As you work on these areas, update your resume with your new skills and your insights. Your resume should be a living document, evolving as you grow. You see, having quit my job and counting on myself to land a new job as a cloud engineer in three months, I must say, I don't recommend anyone to blindly quit their job today, but I had three months of expenses saved up, which allowed me to double down on my learning. Everyone thinks that there's this magic pill that will bring you results. Whereas most of the time, it's the same task repeated day in and day out that bring you to your goal. And if you're looking for a cloud path that nobody is talking about, but should be, then check out this video right here. This is the same path that I use when I quit my 20K a month cloud engineer job. So you do not want to miss this.